Hey folks, this is Sean McCormick from Lightroom Blog and today we're going to look at a really neat program called Luminar from MacFun. It's their raw processing software but it also acts as a plugin from Lightroom. So I'm going to be dealing with this as an external editor. So I've opened up a file already because when you open a raw file it takes a couple of seconds for it to actually load in because it's got to do the, the mosaic. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take you around what's available in the actual program itself. So as well as all of the menus which basically reflect stuff that's already in here, uh, the first thing you have is you've got your open, then you've got your batch processing which I'm just going to click on so you can get a quick look at it. So what you do is you load images in and then you can apply uh, presets and then you click continue and that lets you go through and apply the presets. Uh, I'm not going to load them in though because we're not showing that feature at the moment. If you have a finished image that you want to share, you click on the next icon, which lets you share to mail, to messages, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Smugbug and 500px. So you also have your zoom in and out. Uh, you can go to 100% directly there as well. If you click on 100%, it allows you to go back out again. So that's if my uh, my tablet is acting up and I have a new one ordered it's it's really really old in fact they don't make the one I have anymore and so the pen has started to go and it's two pens would buy me a new tablet so I'm buying a new tablet so the next thing you have is your preview so if you've made the change you click on this it'll as, you, as you're basically active it'll show you the preview and then you have a split view for before and after which we're going to look at in a second we have an undo a history and here's where you turn on and off the uh, histogram. And here's where you turn it on, on and off your layers. This gets rid of the presets from the bottom and this hides the panels. So generally you want those on. So here we have the histogram as we've seen and here we have the layers where you can build up different layers. You can have adjustment layers or you can have additional images. And the filter is just where you do all of the hard work. So instead of having a load of panels with specific things in them, you add exactly what you want as a filter and then you use the controls on that. Down at the bottom is not a film strip. What it is, is actually your presets. So presets are very important in Mac fun stuff in general. Uh, so here we have the basic. So this is what's inside the basic pack. But you can also choose things like dramatic, uh, street, portrait, outdoor, travel. And by clicking plus more, it'll take you to the website where you can get more free ones and more premium ones. Uh, you can also save your own, which we'll look at shortly. Uh, we'll probably do it very, very quickly after we've added a filter. And so if we say we went to dramatic, for example, these thumbnails will update to show stuff in that dramatic set. Now, I'm not actually going to apply a preset to start with. I'm going to add a filter. And one of the new filters that are in Luminar Neptune, which is the new version, is this accent AI filter, which is basically a magic filter. The idea is that it will do your processing for you to a certain extent. So as I start to move it, see what happens is it starts to change the distribution of the tones in the image. So the lighter areas get darker and the darker areas will get lighter. It's a bit like a tone mapping kind of filter. So it creates a bit of a tone mapping. Now, one thing that to me was very noticeable about Luminar when I started to use it first is you do get noise, but there is a denoising filter which does move it quite, remove it quite effectively, but it's a very processor intensive thing. So it's the kind of thing that I would leave as the very last thing that I would do before I do anything else. And that's that filter there. And that reminds me, I didn't actually cover those, so I'm just going to cover them very, very quickly. So you got a hand tool for moving around. You've got a brush tool um, for brushing in and out a mask. You've got a gradient mask. You've got a radial mask. You've got a transform tool. Uh, you've got your clone and stamp. Then next you've got an erase tool, the denoise tool that I just mentioned. You have a crop tool as well. And then you've got this new plugins tool, which allows you to plug in uh, any of the other things that are there from MacFun, such as noiseless or tonality, for example. Uh, if I actually click on the equivalent plugins up here, you'll actually see them here. So those are the ones that are available. So we've added that filter. So I'm gonna add another filter just to show you some of the filters. Um, so by going through this list, you can see all of the stuff that's available to you. So I'm going to do is we talked about a, a gradient. There's actually the second one is an adjustable gradient, but this is different. So you've got this is like a double filter. So you've got controls for the top of the gradient and the bottom of the gradient. And by clicking set orientation, it brings up the actual filter itself. So you're able to set it where you want it and you're able to set how strong it is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring down the exposure on the top, increase the contrast and vibrance, and I'm going to cool it down a little bit. And then on the bottom, I'm going to open it up a little bit, but I'm going to increase the contrast and vibrance as well. But in this case, I'm actually going to warm it up. 
so we kind of get some warmth against cool. So to see what this is doing, you can turn it on and off so you can have a, a quick preview of the effect. Now to see the whole lot as well, as we've seen before a minute ago, we have this filter that we can drag across. Now my, like I was saying, I was having a problem with my tablet, so my tablet wants to do funny things on me. So you can normally drag this backwards and forwards, but my tablet won't allow me to click and hold it. i try the shift key, sometimes that helps. No, it's not going to do it for me. So you can drag this backwards and forwards across, but because of the nature of my tablet and the reason I'm replacing it is because I can't do that with lots of things. I can't even select text properly currently. So we're going to turn that off. And again, if we click on this, as you're clicking, you can see that it does the preview backwards and forwards as well, just to show you that one. And if I click on history, you can see the steps that we've done along the way, just to get you a view of that. So let's add another filter. So I'm going to go for the dehaze filter. So now that's dark and it's slightly. So what I'm going to do is now it hasn't darkened it quite as badly as uh, Lightroom's does. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure to bump it back up again, just to brighten the whole image overall. So now let's say I'm very, very happy with what's going on here. If I come to this little menu here and click on it, that will create a new preset. So if we've got a preset, I'm going to call it Sean one create new preset. So now if I go down to presets and I click on user, uh, this one shows up here. There's one I've already created. Uh, so that's how you save your presets and they can be used in the batch processing as well. So if I click on, uh, let's see if I could close them down, but I can't. Now you can reset them by clicking on this or you can turn them off by clicking on the X. So let's say I wanted to add a new layer. So if I click plus, that gives us an option of a new stamp layer, a new image layer, and a new adjustment layer. In this case, I'm gonna go for a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna put in something different on it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do an exposure one, or let's, yeah, let's do a dramatic one just for drama. So here's our dramatic filter. So I'm gonna put some drama in the sky and local contrast. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click graduated filter click to draw the gradient. So I'm just going to draw it here. So that basically is dramatic in the sky and not so dramatic in the reflection. So as you can see here, that's worked very effectively. And we can see the layer here, we got white for what's visible and black for what's concealed. We can also change the opacity as well on it by clicking here. So you can change the level of effect that you're having with it as well. Same as other layers, other layers, shall I say. And now I'm going to go with the clone stamp. I'm going to click apply and what a clone stamp layer will do will actually generate a new copy of the whole thing. So that's what the preparing is. It's actually creating a copy. So this does take a couple of seconds because it's, it's rendering what you've done so far. So here we are now and I'm just going to click here. So you click for your source and then you wipe and on here, get rid of that. And I have one over here. There's probably a few more this image. It's pretty nasty. So let's say I just want to get rid of something that's in the water though. That's not big enough here. So uh, let me just change the size. So the shift and the shift uh, with square brackets and the square brackets work exactly the same as anything else. So if I hold on my alt key, I can click another area to copy from. And so I can get rid of that. And yeah, I'm not exactly happy that's going to control Z to undo. Will that allow me to undo? I, yeah. So that's undone it. So I want it to be a little bit more precise. And no, I'm not happy with that. So I'm, I'm just not going to deal with that now. Again, because I'm just showing this really, really quickly, I, I, I would be a little bit more detailed if I was doing it for, for real, but I'm trying to show you through this song. Let's say we want a crop, bring up the crop tool, you want to apply changes, uh, apply them. Yep, so apply. So let's come back to the layer stack now. And I'm just gonna, uh, I don't want a free rotation, I want to keep the original. So I'm gonna bring this in a little bit down this way. And it up to put that on the third a little bit more. So I'm going to apply that now. And what's nice is it tells you what the size is going to be. Uh, 
That's pretty much a basic look at what you can do with it. After that, really, it's just about what all the different filters do. So you've got detail enhancer, uh, you know, fog enhanced golden hour. Golden hour is really, really cool. The idea is that it adds um, the golden hour kind of colors. It enhances golden hour colors, and then you can choose to increase the saturation. It's actually lovely on landscape images here. Um, that might be slightly too much saturation, uh, but we leave it at that. I'm going to add another filter here as well. Uh, we'll go down. It may not let me drag down. Oh, it does. This is the thing about my pen. Sometimes you don't know what it's going to do. We could use a soft focus. We could use sharpening if we want to add a little bit of sharpening. But let's go for some structure because of the fact that this has buildings in it. So I'm going to use structure and boost. Oh, yeah. So that's really, really nice what that's doing there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up with one last thing, and that is I'm going to click on the denoise just to show you what the denoise filter looks like. So again, this will generate a new layer for the denoising. And by default, it will jump into a 200% view. And what it does is the area of the screen that you see is the area that it's applying the filter to. Uh, so that way it just gives you a preview of what the effect is doing because it's really, really processor intensive and it takes a long time to actually happen. So I'm going to come down to somewhere that I know to be noisy, which is down here. I'm going to have a little bit of noise and a little bit of building in here so that we can see the edges. Because the principle of denoising is that you're blurring pixels to get rid of the noise. So we can see here this is really noisy. And even though this is at a light setting, we can see that it's, it's blurred quite a lot. Now, because this is at 200%, uh, it's actually going to be very pixelated. So I'm actually going to zoom back out to 100%. And it will reprocess. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to look at my building edges. Uh, that's a swan there, in case you're wondering what that is. And this is another swan that's just gone for a little swim in the middle of my exposure. So we can see here that the noise is gone. But we can see here that even at this, these are not super, super sharp. And um, so the, these edges still look reasonably OK. But I would actually bring that back a little bit. And then when I'm ready to go, I will click Apply. Now, I'm not going to click Apply in this case because it is particularly processor intensive. So I'm just going to click Cancel out of that to go back to the program itself. And the image will process now and it'll jump back to where it was. So if you wanted to share this, then you could come out here and you could export it as well as sharing it. So let's have a look at the export options here. So here you can choose to sharpen it, choose the original size or change the size. And it's going to get exported in sRGB, Adobe RGB, or Pro Photo. It could be a JPEG, a TIFF, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can set the quality level as well. So I'm just going to cancel out of that there now. So that is a look at Luminar, and it's it's actually a pretty nice program. And the great thing about it is the fact that you can use it as a plugin for Lightroom. So that way you can do the basic raw conversion in Lightroom if you prefer that. And then you can use this as a file finisher. As you've seen from what I've done here, it's got plenty of tools for enhancing images, stuff that's radically different from what Lightroom does as well, uh, especially a lot of people are coming from a Lightroom background. And some are looking at alternative options because they don't want to do a subscription model. Uh, this is a pretty nice program. so. It's up to you. There's a deal on at the moment where you can get it cheap uh, with a discount. I'm going to include a link to the trial below that you can try it out for yourself. It is an affiliate link. Uh, but like I say, it doesn't make any difference if you do go and buy the program. Uh, it will, you know, it doesn't cost you anything extra for that. So I hope, hope you've enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I'm looking at all sorts of things that are Lightroom related, including external editors and things like that. But I'm also doing some general photography stuff as well, like lighting uh, and just generally shoot kind of stuff. So it'll always be a little bit extra, but it'll be generally around the post-processing vein with occasional forays into actual photography. Uh, if you like the video, do hit the thumbs up and hit the notifications if you want to get a message from uh, YouTube letting you know I've got new content up. I am doing fairly regular content. I have been trying to do it on Mondays and Fridays and sometimes midweek if I get a chance. But it's all just based on my, my photo workload because I do work as a commercial photographer. So... Uh, a lot of clients are last minute clients, so you'll get a headshot coming in the following day when you plan on doing some video and stuff like that. So it does take a little bit of time. I'm going to do a talking head video as well pretty shortly, talking about the stuff that's going on as well. Uh, stuff like my new drone that's arriving and all this kind of stuff on my new large format camera, which has nothing to do with Lightroom. So thanks again for watching, folks, and I will see you in the next video.